I've left my Jinty soaking overnight in a tub of Gettle. So I'm just going to see how it looks. Put them on you the plants. I uh, get these about 100 for about 150 or something from a door to door sales company. Good value. And let's see what my ginty body looks like, having been soaked overnight. The paint start to strip off, so just lightly going to brush it. Uh, I might notice I've got newspaper around because this can splash, and you don't want dental splashing all over your work base, uh, bench. So a little brush there, and the paint is definitely coming off very easily but the plastic body is left unaffected. It's not a quick way of removing paint, but it's a fairly effective one. And it doesn't destroy the body, and means you can take the locomotive body shells right back down to the basics, and you can build it back up again. Some of the paint's a bit more stubborn than the rest. And I'm thinking maybe I should get a bath of water. So I'm just going to take a little break and I'm going to get another little tub, perhaps with some water, so that I can wipe it as I go along. Okay, I've got here a little tub of water. And I've scraped a lot of the paint from my body here, so I'm just going to try shake it off. Oops. A bit of paper to take most of the agent off. Because you don't want to uh, pollute your water bath. Put that in there and using a different brush, see if I can take more of the paint. This white paint is looking a bit more stubborn than the green. And there's still a couple of bits and flakes. There is one little drawback to this method, which I haven't managed to get round. I'll try and bring the body shelling closer. But if you look, for example, at the steps or at the running board here, you'll see there's still a sliver of green. And it seems to be that when the paint is in a corner or a nook, it's more difficult to shift. And for that, I probably need to get a little scraper just to try and get into those little crannies and nooks and get those little vestiges of paint out. So I'll stop there and I'll work on this manually and hopefully by the time we get back it should be a nice pristine jinty body, all black, ready for developing. Let's have a look at the body shell now. I've taken all the green paint and the white trim off. The worst pit is where it fits into these little nooks and crannies. You really need like a sharp, sharp screwdriver or a needle file to scrape it away. If I turn it around here, there is, in fact, just little hints of green paint. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Uh, just basically in here and along that side there. So this may require just a touch more work. And you can see the green sheen coming off. Maybe there's residue there. But in the ordinary light, it doesn't look too bad. Once I get it painted up, I'll hide that green paint and it should be alright. So now I've got my cleaned up 
uh, plastic body shell in good condition. I'm just going to let it dry out and give it a little clean and then we can start on working on decaling it and painting it. I've left my Jinty body for a day or two, mainly because I've been at work. Uh, and looking at it, you can see that it's nice and pristine. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any effect from the Dettol. The only thing I notice is that inside, there is a slight bit of discoloration in here, but I don't think that's anything to worry about. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to repaint the whole body in black. Uh, which will give it a uniform look and will also cover any of the residual green paint that was stuck in the little nooks and crannies like that little bit there and just in there. Um, I don't want to go into a huge big scraper and maybe risk damaging the body. I think I've got, if I were to measure this, about 99.5% of the old paint off, and I think that's pretty good. Hopefully I might get more experience and could get better as I do more of this work. However, I'm going to start by painting. I've got here a matte black paint. Um, I haven't quite sourced some real colours, but I think I know what I might get later on for different projects. And I also have, which I'm assured is a pretty good equivalent to Buffer Red. So these are the two colours that I need, and I'm going to paint them. Before I do, I'm going to put down a protective covering of newspaper. Right, so here goes. I've got a little artist palette, so I shall open up black paint. You might not be surprised to learn that I haven't done this since I was a little toot. And painting models, I used to do quite a lot. I haven't done it in donkey's ages. And I refuse to tell you how many years that is. So let's have a look at this. It's Humbro paint. They seem to be the most popular for uh, models. I'm just going to put a splash on the side to see what it looks like. Coming up nice. Okay, so I'll just carry on doing that. At this point it would help if I had something to hold the model in while I paint other bits and also perhaps put some gloves on so I'm just going to put it down. I have here <coughs> the model stand so I shall try and attach this somehow.
I'm just going to leave that to one side, allow the paint to dry, and then I'll have to apply the paint to the buffer bars. Just remove the chassis, put this aside, and for this I'm going to use this red, uh, it's called Carmine, which when I open up, looks like buffer red. It's a bit kind of thick, so let me just mix it up a wee bit. Make a mess of my brush here. Oh dear, look at that, eh? Maybe I should have used something to stir it up with. Okay, let's see how this works. The paint seems to be just a bit thin, although it's kind of gluggy. Anyway, let's try the other side. I started it earlier on. So let's see if I can just get a little bit of paint in there. Whoops. I'll be careful I don't spill into the, the body. Looking at photographs, it's obvious when the buffers are in place, the stem of the buffer is also painted in buffer red, so I'm just going to paint these. Hold them there, just make sure the red paint. Oops. Goes round the outside of the stem of the buffer. sit nicely there. I'm going to do the other three and we'll be ready to reassemble quite shortly. There I've got my gin tape body nicely painted, buffer bars are painted, the buffers themselves are painted, mechanisms already working so all I'm going to do is put it all together. The last thing I want to do with the body is apply transfers. I checked up the Triang website, excellent website for people dealing with this, you probably know about it. And the, the insignia, or the emblem which I settled on, because when I get this kit through from a dealer on eBay, I get three sets of transfers with two sets of cab numbers and three sets of smoke door numbers. Looking at the Jinties, I decided to go for this one. And here's a picture to show what I hope it will look like. It's got the large line emblem with the cab numbers. Okay, uh, the supplier of these hasn't given me 47606, which was a number commonly given to the Jinties. So I'm going to pick a second number, and for no other reason than it's there, I'm going to go for 47434 on the cab side and on the smoke door. So I'm just going to cut out these transfers, ready to put on. Now it comes for me anyway, the tricky bit of getting these transfers onto the side. So I've got a set for my right hand side, and for the left hand side, and right here you might see is the smoke door number. I have no idea how this is going to go, so you can share it with me. Uh, so we'll start with this one. Apparently I have to try and remove the backing very carefully. 
maybe there's an easy way of doing it. There's no fold there. So I'll just to try and prise it open with my thumbnail. Uh, it's not as easy as I thought it would be. Okay. Maybe, oh, here we go. Here we go. It's starting to peel. Just take the backing off. There we go. Now, this has to go to this side here. So I'll try and line it up in the corner and then peel the backing carefully smooth it on um, something is soft cotton bud oops, uh, sorry folks, it's an hard one ready Doesn't look too bad. Try and get this bit here in. Maybe they could be trimmed a bit better. Anyway, that's one emblem on. Try the other emblem. It's got a split in the backing. Oh, why don't they all have that? Right, so that can sit in the corner. and then peel off the rest of the backing It's starting to look nice, I think anyway. Uh, maybe just missed a little bit, can you see that? I wonder if it can come off and back on again. This is where it probably gets destroyed. Put into that corner. for the cab number lovely line up with the corner side and in she goes. I think that's going to look pretty on the track. And all I need now is the smoke door number. This could be the tricky one. I mean, look at the size. How are you meant to split that one up, eh? I don't know. With a lot of patience, I would think. Anyway, here goes. Carefully try and get in between the backing and the front, and nearly there. Hmm. 
can use it. Whoops. Something's been. Oh, there we go. There we go. And let's see if I can get this to line up nicely. Can't focus it, but that's definitely there. Four seven four three four. Four seven four three four. Four seven four three four. I'm quite pleased with that. These take me right back. Now let's fit the buffers. These just push in. Carefully in again. Yep, there it goes. Off the front and rear, and now for the whistles. We have here two brass type whistles. Let's just push in. And the second one, and here. Try and work them down with something. Here we go. I don't want to force them and break anything. Okay, I'll get that done later on, but I think they'll look nice when they're fully in. Right. That's my body shell restored from that green and white. Ah, monstrosity? Yeah, I'll call it that. I had to begin with. Here's the body which I already tested and run. So I'm now going to put this all together. The chassis fits into two little slots at the back of the cab. It sits over the top and this is held in place with a chimney screw. One of these long ones. I think this is the number S11. Sorry, S1008 is a part number for that particular chimney screw. And uh, try and find the locating hole. Come on. And that should just fit in. Let's try again. Yep, that's it. And there it goes, not too tight. My completed Jinty from start to finish, from parts to completed unit. The next thing I need to do is take it over to my test track and let's see how it runs. Here's the Jinty looking quite resplendent, I would think. Let's try it on the track. A little bit of power. Oh, what a smooth takeoff! It's a sheer beauty. Lovely. Get all the speed. Let's try a bit of control. I 
Maybe just imagine that and make a cup of suburban custard and cream maybe. And let's just try reverse and see if she works in that way. Oh yes. I'm really pleased with that folks, so that's a, for me that is a quite a successful little task. Okay let's go back to the bench and get it wrapped up. Well what can I say, from a box of bits to a lovely little running jinty, this would probably be called a late early jinty because it still has the Mark II couplers. Uh, it's late because the this part here, in er, really early ones, was open, so you could see the engine block underneath, but they closed it up, and then later on they fitted uh, screws in here, there's a little hole, that some of the uh, assembly blocks had a hole in there and did away with the chimney screw but I'm really pleased this is going to be one of my favorite locomotives um, hope you enjoyed my uh, venture into building the Jinty um, I hope you appreciate uh, the work I did in getting the mechanism working stripping the body right back to its basics and then painting and uh, finally fitting the transfers. I've thoroughly enjoyed this project and I hope you've enjoyed watching it with me. If you did, if you'd be kind enough to make it a like, uh, give me a few favourable comments, if you have any hints on how I could have done things better so if I can do it the next time, I'd love to hear from you or just say hi. So, from sort 6233 Keep watching YouTube. Bye for now.